So what is visioning? I just wanna take you through some concepts, some ideas, some thoughts that hopefully will stay with you forever. Um, I was introduced to the concept of visioning uh, a few years ago, and it's something that I've worked with many entrepreneurs in and through, and it's something that can really change how you think and how you feel about your business. Maybe you can also apply it to your life, to different areas of goals or dreams that you have. And I just wanna encourage you that it is not something that applies to somebody else. It can apply to you. We all have visions, we all have dreams, we all have goals of where we wanna to get to. And learning the concept of how to vision and some of those tools can be really, really helpful for all different aspects of where we might be in our business or in our life, or even on your university course. So what is visioning? A vision is painting a clear picture of an ideal future that inspires you to action. What does that actually mean? Let me just bring some of that to life for you for a second. We all start January, don't we? All of us with New Year's resolutions. We've all been there, I've been there, I can talk about myself, I'm gonna join the gym in January, I'm gonna lose weight. I'm just gonna get more trimmer. I'm gonna get fitter. I am absolutely determined that I'm gonna do that in my life. Mid-February, I'm finding excuses of why I can't go to the gym on a Monday, a Tuesday, and a Wednesday. And then by the time March comes, I've pretty much maybe stopped going altogether. And a vision, a vision in our business or our future, what happens is we can get bogged down by the day-to-day -day work, we can get bogged down by the everyday of where we're at. And the vision tends to feel like something pie in the sky, by and by, that we never ever get near. And it's also something where we tend to self-edit. When we think about visioning as human beings, we tend to always think, oh, I can't do that because of this. I can't do that because I've got that person in my life that I need to take care of. And I'm not gonna have the time to do that because I need to spend more time in my family. I'm not gonna have the time to do that because I need to do this. We often do that, we self edit and we think, oh, it's too much hassle to even think about getting there. Yet when we're thinking about visioning for our future to inspire us, we can look at famous people or well-known people in society that we may have heard of that had a vision that sustained them, that carried them through to the end game. Now, whatever your views on these people or their politics or what their views are in life, this is really about just the business concept only. So I saw clearly how much better and more fun air travel could be. I have a guess that just thrown that out to the screen to me at the moment. Who is that? Who was that? You've got it, it was Richard Branson. Back in the 80s, United Airlines, and BA, British Airways, were the only way to really travel. The market was sewn up. There was no way through into that market. It was completely fixed. There was no way of getting into that market. Yet Branson had an idea. He had a vision for the future. And it was that vision, that goal, that concept that sustained him for where he was gonna take that business. And he had to get together the money, the investors, the right people behind it to get excited in that idea that we now know and we all love as Virgin Atlantic. And if ever you've flown with Virgin Atlantic, it can be great fun. It can be a great experience. Now, if it wasn't for his vision, if it wasn't for his determination, he never would have got there. And it was that vision that sustained him. The next one, I was sustained by the vision of walking into a bookstore and seeing my book on the shelf. We all know the famous books. We all love the famous books of Harry Potter. My children love them. Maybe you love them. Maybe someone in your family you know, or maybe you even listening here today love the Harry Potter books. J.K. Rowling, as some of us may know, was turned down more than 30 times when it came to getting her books published. Yet it was that vision that she had of standing in a bookstore when she couldn't afford to heat her council flat and she had to write in coffee shops just to stay warm. It was that vision that sustained her. It was that vision that carried her through. And perhaps the third one and the most famous one that we all know about, but maybe just Google it today and have another listen to that famous speech. You've guessed it, Martin Luther King, I have a dream. It's that one vision that perhaps resonates down the ages 
down the, the annals of time through history. It's the one vision that still today is maybe not fully fulfilled, but we're getting a lot closer to it. I have a dream. And it's these visions and these things that are within us that we need to learn to get down, documented and into paper. Because when we have those really bad days, we need to learn of how to reconnect with our vision. So what does this next slide mean? What does that picture mean to you? Well, I just want to introduce you to the concept of neuroplasticity. Now, I am not a neurosurgeon. I am not a neuroscientist, but this fact I do know. The neurons in our brain teach us habits. So when we get up in the morning, when we do a task, when we do the things that we do in our lives, neuroplasticity is involved with those tasks. However, when we do something new and we retrain ourselves to do it again and again, the neurons in our brains create new pathways. Why am I telling this now? What does that mean to do with visioning? What that means is this, when we learn to vision, when we learn to get in touch regularly with our vision document, with that piece of paper that we have, that we have in front of us on our desks in those dark, in those dark days, learning to get in touch again with our vision is so, so important. And our brain learns to create that new pathway. And the more we exercise that, the more we do about it, the more we get in touch with what our vision is, what it means for our future, the more our brain learns to create those new neuro pathways. It's a really exciting concept. I wanna ask you as well the question of what this young chap is doing here. Ask yourself that question, throw me the answer right now to the screen, what is he doing? What does visioning have to do with this slide? Well, let me tell you what it has to do with this slide. This is a young chap thinking about what he might do in the future. I'll often spend time with my daughters saying to them, what do you want to be in the future? What do you want to be? And why is it important that we think about this slide in that context? And I tell you why. It is so important that when we vision, we vision very much like a five-year-old. We think about what the future could be. If you ask a five-year-old what they want to do in their future, they don't self-edit, they don't hold back, they don't think about what's going to get in the way, what finance might trip them up, they don't think about what they're going to need to do to learn to get there. They just have that dream, they have that goal, they have that vision, they do not self-edit. And when you're going to learn to vision and get yourself into the, to the right frame of mind to think about visioning for the future of your business, you need to get yourself, your mind into a creative place. And that is what visioning will do for you. Just think about that slide for a second and then think about clearing those distractions from your mind or the how am I going to do that? How is that going to happen? Clear out all the can'ts and just think for a moment of what that dream is burning inside of you, that goal, that thing that somebody has told you that you can't do. I'm here to remind you today that you can, that you can vision for what it is that you want to do. You just got to get yourself into that creative space of thinking like a five-year-old does and don't hold back. Don't self-edit. So, what should a vision be? If you're thinking about getting that vision down into a document, it should be inspiring. To anyone that picks it up, it should be inspiring. Don't self-edit. It should be realistic as well. It should be strategically sound. It should be documented. You absolutely have to get your vision written down. And the last one of all, you should tell people. Now you've got to be careful perhaps who you tell, you don't want to tell everybody, but people who are close to you, people who you can trust, people who are confident, maybe a lecturer, maybe a business associate, somebody who you know has got your back. Tell them about the vision document. Get in touch with it regularly. And lastly, but not least, you will need to break your vision document down into key milestones to be able to reach that vision over maybe a 12 month period, 
a two year period or a three year period, or even a five year period. And you will need to learn how to break that down into different milestones at a different time. Thank you for listening.